Some people say that the first Waldensian was Peter Waldo in the 12th century, but this is not really accurate. Whilst it is true that Peter Waldo was a merchantman from Leon, he did sell all of his goods and commit his life to the preaching of the gospel. He was not the first Waldensian and their roots trace back much before him. In fact, one of the early names for the Waldensians was actually the word Insabati, showing clearly that the Waldensians were Sabbath keepers as they were named after the very day upon which they worshiped. As the Waldensians were coming up in the early centuries and the Roman Catholic Church was forming as well, both of them saw the heathens around them as a mission field. But whilst the Roman Catholic Church used the power of the law and the sword and political alliances to win people over, the Waldensians put their faith in the strength of God's word. When you gaze on the magnificent mountains that surround us, you cannot but admit that God provided a safe retreat for his people. To the Waldensians was given the task of passing the light on to the Protestants of modern time and penetrating the darkness with true Bible doctrine. Indeed, they maintained longer than any group in the struggle to preserve the Bible and primitive Christianity. In upcoming episodes, we're going to see the caves in which they hid and where they met for worship. We're going to see the places where they trained their young people in how to study the Bible and in how to be missionaries. We're also going to climb mountains and see the cliffs over which the Waldensians were hurled to their death in times of persecution. Truly, the Waldensians stand to us today as a group of people who believed in the Bible, as a group of people who believed in mission service. They are a key part of our spiritual lineage today. Father, we thank you for this Sabbath day, dear Lord. May your presence be with us. 
not only here in our sanctuary, but the homes that are represented on the different online platforms, dear Lord. We thank you so much. And have us have a blessed day. Amen. Amen. Our opening song is 272, Give Me the Bible. be seated. Welcome, everyone. It, there should be some excitement in the air. You know, it, every day that goes by, we're one day closer to Jesus coming. Amen. And we want to welcome everybody that um, came out today and, and on the uh, various... Um, online platforms we want to welcome today and we want you to give you a COVID hello. <laughs> I just made that up. <laughs> okay the announcements for today um, first of all I want to um, give my condolences to Anthony Peets and his family. His grandmother passed um, just recently Nellie Aswood and um, also in the bulletin, um, there uh, it was a special um, greetings from um, the Southampton Church. Kathleen Ford sent her condolences. Also, every Thursday, um, we uh, have a Zoom meeting. Um, the, the pastor is hosting a Revelation of Jesus Christ, a Zoom meeting every Thursday night. Um, for the next... Two weeks after this week, the pastor is going to be speaking. It's called Elijah, as I was saying. Um, so it's going to be this week and the next two weeks. That's going to be his topic. And the, um, the scripture is Malachi 4, 4 through 6. You can also um, get that on Zoom and Vimeo and um, Facebook and so forth. Um, the birthday announcements um, for this month, this week, Allison Thomas, Jean Vickers, Natalie Casey. Is there anybody else that had any birthdays this week? 
And also, um, there was a special anniversary by our very own Rhonda and Ronnie Tacklin, June 5th today. And um, Erdley and Gina were married on the same day, right? Double yeah, double wedding. You don't see that too much. Um, anybody guess how many years? 38 years it's in print. Oh, so I guess we should sing um, the birthday. Well, they should sing. Dear Lord, as we celebrate the birthdays of the people this week, we must also remember that today is Earth's birthday, um, the seven days that you created the heaven and the earth. And um, dear Lord, we are thankful for this wonderful, blessed day. And bless everyone. For Jesus' name, amen. amen. Also, um, continue with the announcements. There is going to be a board meeting, a uh, church board meeting, Monday, June 14th. So keep that in your calendars. And we are reading through the Bible. Um, um, we're up into Job right now. And also there's a reading of this week, um, The Desire of Ages. And uh, this week is going to be chapter 1 through chapter 9. Also, um, for those of you who are interested in small groups, there's a small group training seminar that's taking place. Uh, I think it started yesterday, June 4th through the 6th, um, a virtual interactive small group um, training session. Um, also, we're going to have camp meeting, believe it or not. Still, we're going to have a camp meeting. It's going to be a virtual camp meeting June 30th through July 3rd. And the title of it is In Christ Alone. And um, the various speakers are um, Dr. Alice Zambala, Dr. Pierre Ameller, Dr. Earl Knight, Dr. David McKenzie, no relation, um, and Dr. Alexander Bryant. Oh, we got a lot of doctors pre preaching to us um, for camp meeting. Anything? Spencer, you have something? Oh. Also, don't um, remind, uh, I want to remind you if, you, if you're um, in need of a food voucher, you can... Um, um, head, um, you can talk to our head deacon or our head deaconess, and um, they'll be gladly to help you with the, if you need a food voucher. Also, um, I guess this is the end of the school year uh, if you're BI soon, and um, June 9th, um, they're going to have an um, end of the year concert. So keep that on your calendar at 7 o'clock, June 9th. That's on a Wednesday. And therefore, it ends the announcements, unless anybody else has anything to say. And now we're going to go into our children's story. Hello, boys and girls. This is Aunt Fernita, and I have a wonderful story for you called Up, Up, and away. Today's memory verse is from Psalm 68, verse 35. It says, God gives power and strength to his people. The message for today's story is God gives us power.
Do you want to go to heaven? What do you want to see there? What do you want to do? Elijah wanted to go to heaven too. Elijah woke up. A beautiful smile spread over his face. Today was the day. Today was his last day on earth. God had told him so. Today, God would take him home to heaven. Elijah and his special helper, Elisha, had a conversation. I am going to Bethel to visit the school of the prophets, Elijah said. You stay here. But Elisha also knew that this was Elijah's last day on earth. I will never leave you, Elisha exclaimed. I will go with you. Elijah and Elisha started on their journey. Elijah visited many of his friends to say goodbye. Late in the afternoon, God told Elijah to cross the Jordan River. The river was deep and there was no bridge. Elijah stopped at the edge of the river bank and took off his cloak. He rolled it up and hit the water with it. The water was divided and there was a dry path for Elijah and Elisha to walk across. What can I do for you before the Lord takes me away? Elijah asked his friend. I want to carry on your work, Elisha said. I want help from the Lord. I want him to give me his power like he gave it to you. If you see me when I am taken away, you will have what you are asking for, Elijah answered. Suddenly, out of nowhere, a chariot of fire appeared, pulled by horses of fire. The chariot drove right between the two men. And then Elijah was lifted up into the chariot and quickly taken to heaven by a strong wind called a whirlwind. Elijah dropped his cloak as the chariot took him up. Elisha picked it up and held it close. He looked up into the sky and he looked as hard as he could, but the chariot of fire and the horses of fire and his friend Elijah had disappeared. Elisha walked back to the Jordan River. He stopped and rolled up Elijah's cloak just as Elijah had done. Then Elisha struck the water with it. The water of the river divided once again. Elisha walked back across the Jordan River on dry land. Now he was sure that he would carry on Elijah's work. Elisha knew that God had given him power. He would serve God just as Elijah had. For all of his days, he was God's servant, and he used the power God gave him to help others. God will give you power too power to obey him and to do good all the days of your life. Hi, I'm Dr. Roger Schwelt. I'm a pulmonary and critical care specialist practicing in Southern California where I've treated hundreds of COVID-19 patients. Many modern medicines come from natural substances. Aspirin, for instance, comes from the bark of the willow tree. But many other substances exist, and scientists are looking at those substances and seeing how they relate to your immune system. One group of scientists found that small amounts of eucalyptus oil completely transformed the innate immune system when they looked at it under the scanning electron microscope. Eucalyptus can be used in various different ways. A few drops of eucalyptus oil can be placed into a diffuser or into a hot foot bath. Or if you're lucky enough to have a eucalyptus tree, you can use the leaves instead of the oil. These substances that are in the air are known as phytocides. And simply by inhaling it, it can enhance your immune system, an effect that can last up to seven days. Have you gone for a walk in nature today? If you haven't, you should. Take at least 20 minutes, go outside, make sure it's in a green space area out of the city, 
to get the true benefits of walking in nature. God's handiwork is not only enjoyable, but it's good for you. Take time to rest from the stressful work of the day and take the road less traveled. Here we see practical and simple remedies that can be used in conjunction with modern medical technology to enhance our God-given immune system. We are fearfully and wonderfully made. God has given us simple remedies to protect us from harm. Learn these simple remedies like fresh air, teach it to others so that it can be practiced to enhance our immune system and hopefully prevent disease down the line. It just might help you or a loved one in the fight against COVID-19. More than 100 years ago, a group of German immigrants settled in Pazuzo, an isolated place in the Peruvian jungle. Since there was no land available in Pazuzo, Juan and Teresa Heidinger decided to move to the region of Puerto Inca, close to the Pachidia River. It was also a remote place, accessible only by the river. Far from civilization, they would need to be self-sufficient and provide for almost all their own needs. One day, Teresa developed serious kidney problems, and the only available medical facility was the Maranatha Clinic, accessible only by boat from their farm. The American owners, Monroe and Patricia Dirksen, were self-supported missionaries who had opened a clinic in a place without any Adventist presence. They volunteered to risk all with God believing that he would provide for all their needs. At their clinic, Teresa received proper treatment and a simple yet powerful gift, the book, The Great Controversy. Teresa was also invited to join the Dirksons for Sabbath services. Impacted by the book and the kindness of the missionaries, Teresa was baptized, followed by Juan, his mother, and finally their four children. Thanks to the missionary's self-denying initiative, all four of the Heidinger's children were later sent to the Peruvian Adventist University, which completely changed their future, increasing their usefulness to both the church and the society. Today, Maritza holds a degree to teach biology and chemistry in the high school and is married to a pastor. Daisy is a food engineer who served as mayor of Puerto Inca and is now a member of the staff of Peru's Assistant Minister of Education. Lizeth studied psychology and married a pharmaceutical chemist, both actively serving in their local church in Los Angeles, USA. And Edward, who became a pastor, is currently the executive secretary of the South America Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, located in Brazil. As you return your tithe and give your promise, ask God what he is asking you to risk for him today. Remember that self-denial and self-sacrifice are the fuel that ignite precious fruits for God. May we put our desires last and God first. Has anybody been robbed? Oh, you have. Oh. Well, what did you think of that person that robbed you? Pretty bad person, huh? Mm. That's a bad guy that did that to you. But the Lord says, you have robbed me with tithe and offerings. Now, we don't want to be bad people, do we? So let's give God what he has given us, his blessings with tithe and offering. There's three ways to give. You can either drop it off when you leave in one of these boxes um, placed at the exit doors, or you can go to the conference office and, and give your tithe and offerings, or you can, um, um, the treasurer here meets on Sundays, I think it's from 11 to 12 or something like that, that she will um, collect your offerings. So let's, let's remember to not be robbers of God and give 
him back the blessings that he has given us. May we bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, it's just a simple matter of trust, dear Lord. It's a simple matter of us trusting in you that you will supply our needs, dear Lord. Dear Lord, help those who lack the faith in you that we may be able to come to you and give what you have asked us to give. For Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I, I want to extend an, a, a welcome to each and every one of you guys as well. I know um, Doc mentioned, you know, or welcome you, but it's so good to see uh, a few different people. Uh, I, I shouldn't say different, but a few extra members coming out, members that we haven't seen for a while. And so we want to extend a, a healthy welcome to you guys for coming out. This is your first time in a while, and... We hope and pray that this will just continue from week to week. Remember, as Doc said, we are one Sabbath closer to the second coming of Jesus. So with that in mind, we, we see a young man out there in the audience. We, we um, congratulated him a couple of weeks ago. Young Aaron, Aaron Spencer, he's graduated. I believe we had Norman as well. We just want to thank the Lord for his family and for being with him throughout his studies. They tell me that if you want, some people complain about education is so expensive. But I heard a saying that said that if you think education is expensive, now I want you to think about this. This is a deep statement that, that I want to make to you because some people complain that education is so expensive. But the individual in, the, in his quote or her quote went on to say, if you think education is expensive, try ignorance. I think somebody will get that later on. But, you know, it, it, it pays. Education pays, and, and it calls for sacrifice. And families have sacrificed to, for their children. I told my daughter one day, I said, we've done so much sacrificing for you when you get to where the Lord would have you to be in your education, providing he doesn't come before you complete your education, that you will look back at your parents and be tangible in your blessings to them. But anyway, we've come to that portion of our service where we pray, where we can talk to God and communicate with him. Up until that one of the most powerful weapons, and I think, Sister Minus, you could concur with me, one of the most powerful weapons that we have as Christians is prayer. Somebody doesn't really believe that. The most powerful weapon that we have as Christians is prayer. And so as we are about to partition the throne of God, those of you that can kneel, we invite you to kneel. Those of you... Uh, uh, unable to kneel because of your situation with your knee or knees. You can feel free to remain in your seats. God understands. God knows our hearts. Let's prepare our hearts as we meditate for a moment on God's blessings. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we are truly thankful for we have this opportunity to come to you in prayer. We could put all things aside and clear our minds for this special moment. Father, as we reflect on your love, on your kindness, and even on your mercy, we just want to say thank you. You are the God 
that provides. And Father, we have come at this time thanking you for your many blessings that you have bestowed upon us throughout this week. Lord, we have accepted your invitation to come together in your house of worship. Lord, we just pray that you would accept our worship, feeble as it might be. Lord, we think of loved ones. We think of family members. We think of those individuals or families that have lost loved ones this week. Lord, we just pray that you would comfort the families that have lost loved ones. We pray that you would be by their side and that you might even send someone to uh, listen to them or just to stand beside them in this hour of their bereavement. Lord, we want to pray for your church here at, at Warwick. Lord, we thank you for all the ministries that we have, have, have here. Lord, we want to thank you for the special blessing that was bestowed upon our community last weekend, last Sunday, in the giving out of groceries. Lord, many, have, many came, but Lord, we even went out door to door to give uh, the bags of groceries to individuals. So, Lord, we pray for them. We pray for the literature, the literature that we put in the grocery bags for them to read. We pray, Lord, that some heart, some soul would have read them and even, Lord, bow to you, Father. Lord, we ask that you will forgive us for our many sins. We ask that you would cleanse us from all of our unrighteousness. Lord, we pray for our government. and We thank you for the things that are starting to happen. Things are beginning to open up. And, Lord, we just pray that your will will be done. We know that there is coming a time when things would happen that will cause us to make a choice between serving you or serving men. But, Lord, we pray that you will strengthen us for that day. We pray, Lord, even now as we are going through a, a dress rehearsal for that great day to come. Lord, we know that uh, Satan will be as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So, Lord, we pray that you will strengthen us, that you will seal us through your Holy Spirit for the day of redemption. Lord, now we come to pray for our pastor as he brings forth the Elijah message. Lord, we pray that you would uh, take from his mind those things that are his and that you will put your things in his mind that he will be able to speak a word for you. Bless us and those who are listening, those who are viewing us through this service. We pray for them as well, each family that is represented. Pray, Father, that you will give them a blessing that we will receive here as well. So again, Lord, we just thank you for all that you have done for us and all that you are doing and all that you will do if we remain faithful to you in the end. So bless us to this end, we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. I would like for us to take our scripture reading that we will be reading and the pastor will be speaking on for the next three weeks to Malachi chapter 4. We want to look there at verses 4 through 6. Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament. Malachi chapter 4. And read verses 4, 5, and 6. Malachi chapter 4, our scripture reading, verses 4, 5, and 6. And I will be reading from the New English Bible. Remember the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded him in, he in Herod for all Israel with the statutes and the judge and judgments. Verse 5 says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And finally, verse 6, And he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. May God continue to bless us as we continue to read and meditate upon his word. Thank you. Story no one would believe. He prayed. 
with us. Congratulations on your well-earned graduation. God bless you. And to everybody else, Sister Richardson, it's wonderful to see you. Uh, I see so many faces. I've greeted you, some of you as you came in, and some of you that are seated there. I see Sister Kirkpatrick. God bless you guys very much. I have great news for you. I have great news for you. That is about what's going to happen next Sabbath. Let me explain to you what's going to happen next Sabbath. Next Sabbath, we, you are all again welcome to come. We do not have a capacity number. What does that mean? That means that we can fit as many people in the church as we can safely have. That's all that we are going to have. Give me a thumbs up when I, I can do it. All right, uh, so that is what's going to happen next Sabbath. So we're not uh, at 25% or 20%. We don't have a limit of 50 people. We ha our limit is based on how many people we can safely sit. Now, how do we safely seat? We have accepted the following guideline as elders. We have accepted 
that we are going to go with the six feet separation, no mask, while you are seated. Did you hear me? I thought some people would be clapping, you know, honestly. I thought. So as long, therefore, as long as you remain in your seat, you can take your mask off. As long as you remain in your seat, you can take your mask off. If you don't want to take your mask off, then don't take your mask off, all right? But if you're going to move around the church, if you're going to the bathroom anywhere, yes or no? If you're going anywhere, we need to know so that way uh, we can uh, put, uh, we, we can do this, all right? So we're trying to see if we're going to be able to present off of my laptop. I don't know. Uh, but I do know that Reed is going to do whatever he can. Also, thank you. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for your compassion. Um, you know that I left because of the situation with my father. Uh, just a side note, a side note that one thing that my father did manage to do was reunite my mother, sister, and I. Uh, please, I, it's not that I've been estranged from my mother or my sister. I get along great with my sister, and I get along great with my mother, especially that we live so far apart. We get along really, really great. Sister Jody, stop shaking your head so much at me. Okay? All right? All right. Fa Ooh, my gosh. I get, give, give the Lord a hand clap of praise for Reed. All right? I swear, if there's anybody who has the spirit of Elijah, it is Reed. Jesus, help me. Thank you. You guys don't know all the mess that we were going through at the, in Spanish, okay? And, and still we, we didn't get it all worked out because we were sending out a signal and they didn't have any audio. So they saw me flapping around, but they didn't hear any words. But, but we'll, we'll get that sorted out for next Sabbath. But um, praise God. So my last time my mother, sister, and I were all together with, was with my dad. 17 years ago. I've been with my mother, obviously. I've been with my sister, obviously. I've seen them. And they have seen each other as well. You know, they've done the whole thing. But the three of us together was 17 years ago. And we tried to do one of those things to recreate a picture, but we couldn't make it. <laughs> we didn't fit in the clothing that... <laughs> Sister Richardson, stop. All right, we just didn't fit. And, but we took at least a picture together, and my gosh, there was so much difference. I, I, for example, I look a lot better than I did back then. And that's all I know. Uh, uh, other people may not agree. Here's some announcements. Here's some announcements. We're going to start our Truth for Youth. We want to begin it next Sabbath. This Sabbath, we have the adventurers meeting together at the church from around three o'clock on. So if you have a child, if you would like to subscribe, uh, enter your kid into Adventurers, please speak with Sister Bishop. Please speak with Sister Bishop. But now this evangelistic series that we're going to be doing, it's going to be once a week for our kids. And why? It's right here. Could you read this with me, please, from Last Day Events, page 206. What does the Spirit of Prophecy says? When the heavenly intelligence, come on, read it together, see that men will, truth and simplicity, as did Jesus, the very what? Will be, and will go for. Now, some of you know that the, the, Ham, the Southampton Church is giving a seminar on small groups. Sister Waverly was there present, and some other of you were present. I want to encourage you to participate in that training seminar, that small group training seminar. We want to be equipped, every single one of us, because every single one of us will have to give witness to what we believe. Just get ready for that, folks. That day is coming very quickly. Sabbath School Council meeting this Monday at 7 p.m. Sabbath School Council meeting this Monday at 7 p.m. How many of you are looking forward to having normal Sabbath School here in the church? Amen? Amen. How many of you would like to see the classrooms, the classes, the different classes 
go back to different classes. Amen. Amen? All right. And how many of you would like to see the children Sabbath school begin? Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, if you would like to participate in the, and if you would like to volunteer, please call Sister Brown. Please call Sister Brown and let her know that you are willing to volunteer as a teacher in whatever division you want. Now, I have to be very clear with you. I want there to be children's Sabbath school. Can I have an amen? amen? But two things I cannot make happen. I can't make anybody bring their kids. Did you all hear me? Did you all hear me? And number two, I can't make somebody teach. So we need two things. We need people to bring their kids and we need members to be willing to teach. So folks, I shared this with the Spanish church. I'm sharing this with you. Next Sabbath, we would like to see children's Sabbath school begin. We need your help for that. Okay, graduation is almost up upon us. And as you know, it's the end of the year concert, June 9th at 7 p.m. More information will be forthcoming. More information will be forthcoming. It is a virtual uh, concert, all right? And we have our church board, June 14th. Yesterday was the deadline, members of the board, to bring any material that you wanted presented. Please do not give it to me. I mean, I'm not going to mention this person's name, but they are very famous for sending me material on the day of board or the day before board, and that is not fair. Please send me the material this Sabbath, please, before the end of sunset. And how many of you are excited for camp meeting? Amen? Praise God. Yes, in Christ alone, our speaker will be L, uh, our NAD president, Dr. Bryant, Bryant. And this is our early morning and manna speakers, okay? You will be, look, look at your bulletins and you will see more information. Now, I have, I have a question for you. Sister Ferguson asked me to tell you this question. As Sister Ferguson asked me, to say this question. Sis, Sister Ferguson here? No, she's not. That's not fair. She asked me. She wanted to know who knows what type of dog can jump higher than a building? What type of dog can jump? Don't, what are you laughing at? That's a question. What type of dog? Bobby? What type of dog? Huh? What type of dog can jump higher than a building? Any dog. Because Any dog, buildings can't jump. What? Okay, no? All right, all right. I have one more. This comes from BI. Don't blame me. It comes from BI. People are sending me this stuff all the time. Uh, Mr. Spencer Jr., Mr. Spencer Jr., do you know what you call a lazy bull? A lazy bull. Sorry? Yeah, a bull with the horns. Do you know? Uh, the kids said a bulldozer. That's, that's what the kids say. I, I don't know. I'm not a millennial, so, so I don't know. And I have one last one. I have one last one. This came from Sister Waverly Miners, but her name is really Cynthia. She wanted to know, what do vegetarian zombies eat? Sister Birchall, do you know? Huh? I'm sorry? No, you don't? Are you sure? A sister of mine wanted you to know it's grains. Grains. A sister of mine, it didn't work. Why don't we stand for the reading of God's word? Come on, let's stand. Uh, our message is, our, our Bible reading is going to be found in Luke chapter 4. In Luke chapter 4. Sister Miners, they didn't like that one. Uh, another one that sister Miners wanted to ask is, what did the cross-eyed teacher why did the cross-eyed teacher get fired? Don't blame me, it's Sister Miners. Don't blame me, it's Sister Miners. Kagi? Kagi? Why did the cross-eyed teacher get fired? Because he couldn't control his pupils? Oh. <laughs> what? Sister Miners, they like that one. They like that one. All right, all right, our, our message for this morning is, as I was saying, because I was interrupted, 
Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you what you call a, a train that carries bubble gum. I'm not going to tell you what you call a train that carries bubble gum. Yeah, a choo-choo train. Yeah, a choo-choo. You like that one, huh? All right. All right, that's enough. Jesus, our message for this morning, as I was saying, our scripture reading is found in Luke chapter 4. Let's read it together. It's up on the screen. But of a truth I say unto you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah when the heaven was shut up three and six months, when there was over all the land, and was Elijah sent in the land of Sidon unto a woman that was a widow. Verse 27, and there were many lepers in Israel in the time of Elisha, the prophet, and none of them were cleansed, but only Naaman, the Syrian, and they were all filled with wrath in the synagogue as they heard these things. And they rose up and cast them forth out of the city, and led him unto the brow of the hill whereunto their city was built, that they might throw him down headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way, went his way. As I was saying, please observe that you may even tell, say the truth in the church, and it will be unappreciated, okay? But that's really not really the point. The point is the woman. The point is that woman. That woman was able to demonstrate Christianity, given for that time, in a time when everybody was selfish. Message for this morning, as I was saying, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer, please. God, anoint these lips of mine and heart that the words that I say unto thee may be acceptable. And touch the ears of those who would hear your word in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. And according to 1 Kings, according to 1 Kings chapter 17, you will well remember that Elijah comes before the king and tells the king that because of his sins, because of the sins that he has promoted, because of the sins that he has allowed to progress upon the nation, God would therefore enact a criteria in the covenant that there would no longer be rain upon the earth. As I was saying last time I was with you, the Bible can be viewed as a legal document. As I was saying when I came with you last time, when you're looking at the Bible, please understand that this is the evidence that is laid out for why God does what he does. As I was saying last time when I was with you, when you read through the Bible, understand that God is giving evidence of why he does what he does. Therefore, Elijah, who is well-versed in the covenant, saw the unfaithfulness of the people, and he, in a, des a desire that the people would repent of their sins, ask God, enact this article in your law, that if the people are unfaithful, you would retain the water. Why? Because I want the people to be punished? No, because it makes no sense if your bellies are full and you're going to go to hell. Because it makes no sense if you are perfectly healthy and on your way to hell. Because it makes no sense if you are prosperous and you are intelligent and you have all the acumens that the world says you need in order to be successful, but God looks at you and says you are wanting. What profited a man if he should gain the whole world but lose his soul? 
Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Please understand that the Elijah generation, the last generation, have eyes to see beyond the present and sees the future and recognizes the dangers that there are by the conduct of the present. Did you hear what I said? What you're doing today, how is it impacting your future? How is what you are doing today setting you up for eternity? Because praise be to God, this is not all that there is. It's not. God tells Elijah in verses 7 through 9, he lets Elijah know what is going to happen because of his faithfulness to God's word. He says, I'm going to do it. I'm going to act according to my covenant. I'm going to fulfill my word. Because heaven and earth can pass away, but not one jot or one tittle of the law shall in no wise pass. Can you say amen to that? The grass withers and the flower fadeth, but anybody? The word of the Lord stands for how long? Ever. Ever. Oh, Sister Ferguson, they didn't quite like your joke. Okay, they, they, they weren't too happy with it. But anyway, the Bible, gee, I didn't hear much people, but they liked Waverly's joke a lot. But the Bible says, the Bible, the Bible states, you can't, honey, honey, sweetheart, can't sit there. You got to sit with her. You came together. Yeah, you, yeah, if you came together, you got to sit together. All right, all right. I don't want to be closed down. Is that all right with you guys? I don't, want, I don't want anybody giving a call to the Department of Health and saying that Warwick is not following COVID protocols. Is that okay? All right, so please, no offense, but I, got, I want to keep the church open. All right? So, so the Bible says that when God ordains that something is going to happen, he makes it happen. Now, please understand that it might impact you negatively. Just because you do what God says doesn't mean it's going to go well for you. I mean, just understand that, you know, that if you love God, you're an enemy of the world. And the devil isn't going to keep silent about it. The devil is going to act. But please observe that even though the devil acts, God also acts. Can you say amen to that? Because God says to Elijah, don't worry about what's going to happen. I have something prepared for you. I have a widow, a widow of Sarepta, and she's going to take care of you. As a matter of fact, I have ordered her to take care of you. Check this out. God cannot find a faithful Jew to take care of Elijah. God has to go to the heathens. God cannot trust his people who are called by his name, who know his word to take care of his prophet. He has to go outside. I had a sermon a couple of years ago. I called it outsource. I presented it here. Sometimes God has to outsource. Sometimes God has to go outside of the family of God and find those who are spiritual enough that will obey him. You don't think so? Did you forget? That Jehoiakim, did you forget that Jehoiakim was taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar because Jehoiakim would not obey God, but Nebuchadnezzar did? Did you forget that Jehoiakim would not be obedient to God, but Cyrus was? I mean, you do read your Bibles, right? You do see in the Bible where heathen kings are faithful to God when his own are not. He needs, God needs, and tells Elijah, go, I'm sending you to somebody who's going to take care of you in your time of need. And this is something very important. I need you to pay attention to me. Please, please observe this. 
This is something that we forget about prophecy. When we study prophecy, we look at the beast, we look at the things, we look at scary things, and, and they're important. They are important to know so that way you can avoid. Can you say amen to that? Okay? But there are also hidden messages. But there are also truths that we need to bring out. Okay? So please do me a favor. If you're taking notes, write down God speaks about your future in your present. God speaks about your future in your present. Okay? God speaks about your future in your present. Please observe in Revelation chapter 1, verse 9. In Revelation chapter 1, verse 9, John is on the island of Patmos. John is like an Elijah. He's a prophet. He's warning people about the future. He's faithful to God, even though it gets him into a pot of boiling oil, even though it gets him persecuted, even though it gets him finally thrown to the island of Patmos. Notice that being obedient to God does not mean everything is going to go well with you. It just means that greater is he... God, who is in you, then he who is what? It means you're going to overcome. Could you do me a favor and just tell your brother, I'm going to overcome. Don't, 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 don't look at the fact that the way I am now, don't, 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 be, don't be fooled by what you see now, okay? Because God speaks to your, in your present about your future. Okay, Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, Revelation chapter 1, verse 9, John says, I'm on the island of Patmos. Why? Because I was preaching the gospel. I'm a prisoner. I'm a prisoner. I am captive. I cannot go. I cannot come. I'm physically bound. But John, God comes to your life. Elijah, God comes to your life. And in your present, notice what God says. God comes to Elijah and tells him, no, you are not a prisoner. Are you listening to me? You are a king and a priest. Why could Paul sing in prison after being beaten? Because he knew his present was not his future. Are you understanding me? What you are happening right now with you is not going to be true forever. Praise be to God. Please observe. He is a prisoner. John is? No. That's what man calls him. What does God call him? I call you a king. I call you a priest. They don't know it, but God does. And pastor, but he is physically bound. No, he is not, because God, in his present, takes him to the future. And what's at the future of Revelation chapter 1, verse 7? What, what, what is it? Jesus comes again. And who will be the prisoner then? Those who what? Trespass against him. Notice what God says in your present. Those who forge weapons against you they will, praise be to God, in the future have to pay for that behavior. They will have to suffer the sins for their sins. They will be met with God's retributive just, justice, praise God. Revelation chapter 22, verse 3. And what does God say about the future? Again, in Revelation, notice, John is on the island of Patmos. Yes or no, sister? He is on the island of Patmos. But God is saying, in the future, you will be with me. You will see my throne, and I will be with you, and you will see me face to face. Notice what God does. God looks at your present. He acknowledges it, and he gives you the future. Why? Because the Bible says, the Bible says, the Bible says that God is faithful that with the temptation, he shall what? Give you a way to bear it. And what is the way that you have to bear it? His word. He tells you what's going to happen in the future, in your present. That's why you can say, this is not going to be the same forever. This will not last. God has declared that I be the head and not the tail. 
God has declared that I have victory. As a matter of fact, my Bible tells me that I can overcome with him who is my God. 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Read it with me, everybody, please. For whatsoever is begotten of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that hath overcome the world, even our faith. And this is the problem that most people have today. People don't want to know that they can overcome. You can overcome any besetting illness. Yes, it's true. You might have to go to the doctor regularly. You might have to take pills regularly. But praise be to God, you got the pills. Praise be to God, you can go to the hospital. Praise be to God, you can get on a van, on a bus, or somehow. There are people right now that I know personally that have been in the hospital for over two years. And they do not know, have not breathed outside air. They have not breathed the air outside of the hospital in two years. You got to give God thanks. Sure, you don't have the house you would like to have, but you have a house. I came from the States. I know what cardboard city looks like. Did you know why they have cardboards? Because cardboard and newspaper put together is a great insulator. It keeps you warm. The only problem with cardboard and paper is when it rains. But as long as you have cardboard and paper and they actually line the cardboard with newspaper and they live like that, you don't have the house you would like to have. But do you want to live like this? God gives you the power to overcome. And one of the ways that God gives you the power to overcome is by knowing what your future is. And this will not be your future forever. What is it that overcomes whatsoever is begotten of God? I had a conversation just a few... I, I had a conversation with somebody. I had a conversation with somebody. And they were telling me and they were asking me how it was possible how it was possible that their parents, with a limited amount of education, please listen to me, was able to be so successful. And I answered their question very easily. I said, because your parents didn't know the word quit. Your parents did not know what it meant to quit. Because if they did, they had nobody to fall back on. They didn't have somebody else's money. They didn't have somebody else's house. They, all they had was what they had, and they made do, and they built it brick by brick, plaster by plaster. They built as they had money. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You inherited all of this. And it's very simple. The only way for you to get better is that you have to understand nothing is, there is nothing else. It's either this or bust. And that is what it comes when it comes to our spiritual lives. When it comes to our spiritual lives, we have to understand that no matter what happens now, it's either this or eternity. And we get to choose which type of eternity we want. What is it that overcomes? Our faith. Our faith in the Word of God. Our belief in God. Please, remember, Elijah is in a time that he has to decide if he's going to be faithful to God or not. The people are trying to kill Elijah. 
The people are looking for Elijah. And Elijah has to stay with a widow if he wants to remain alive. Now, have you noticed that scripture says that there was a famine in the land? This famine, according to scripture, did not only affect Israel, it affected everybody surrounding them. Please observe what Ellen White writes in Appeal to Ministers and Church Officers. She writes the following, in all their intercourse with unbelievers, that's Christians, with all our intercourse with unbelievers, they are exerting an influence for what? Good or for evil. They are either a savor of life unto life or of death unto death. And God calls for greater what, everybody? Piety, for holiness of life and of purity of conduct in accordance with the elevating, sanctifying truth which we the lives of the workers for Christ should be such that unbelievers seeing their and circumstance conversation may be charmed with the faith that produces such results. Did you catch that? We, those who say we have the gospel, those who say we know the Bible, we are impacting the world around us. And it's either we will help them with their salvation or we will help them with their condemnation. We who say we know what Scripture says, we are responsible for the choices that they make because they make their choices based on our conduct and our behavior. Therefore, she says through the spirit of prophecy, we need to be A, A. Please notice what she says, okay? She's asking us to be greater piety. We should be generous. We should help one another. We should also not only piety, hope, piety holiness, we should live a way that we can bring honor and glory to God. The Bible says even the appearance of evil is what anybody? A sin. Avoid that. And finally, she says, purity of conduct. Elijah's message got him in trouble with everybody. Scripture says that the king Ahab went and polled all the other kingdoms, asking them if Elijah was hiding with them. Scripture says the king asked Elijah, asked all the other kingdoms if they had any information and took oaths from them from whether or not Elijah was hiding in them. But please observe that God still had protection for Elijah. Now, how did this happen really quickly? 1 Kings chapter 12. You will see that there are two kings in 1 Kings chapter 12. In which book? What chapter? Please remember, there are two kings. What are their names? Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Rehoboam, he is the son of Solomon. He's the son of who? Jeroboam is is somebody who's going to be a king. Let's just put it that way, okay? He's a servant who ran away from Solomon because he knew that Solomon wanted to kill him, so he comes back after the death of Solomon. Now, Rehoboam, he doesn't pay attention to the wise counsel of God's people. He pays attention to kids his own age. Did you hear what I said? He pays attention to kids of his own age. I find it unusual that today in today's society, adults are listening to kids. I, I, I just find it confusing. I find it confusing, as if the kids really know what's happening. Okay? I, 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 just find the, I just find it interesting. I just find it interesting. I know I'm going to get some messages, but that's okay. I've gotten worse. The Bible says, the Bible says, Rehoboam, because of listening to people his own age, 
He lost the kingdom. He lost 10 of the 12 tribes. Are you following me? Yes or no? Jeroboam, he picks them up. He gets them. Now, what does Jeroboam do? Jeroboam has a brilliant idea that in order to keep and consolidate power, he's going to change the worship of the people. He's going to what? This is the first instance of church and state. Jeroboam said to the people, you don't have to go to Israel, Jew, Israel anymore to worship. You don't have to go to Jerusalem. Forget about that temple. Stay here. And I will erect two monuments, two statues, one at the top of the kingdom and one at the bottom of the kingdom. That way you guys don't have to go far and worship. You know, like people today deciding to stay at home and worship on Zoom when they could come to church. Pastor, I, I did say as I would say, right? I did say as I would say, right? Yeah. Don't start with me, sister. Don't start with me. Don't start with me. I, I'm just saying people could come to church, right? But they'd rather stay at home, right? 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 Okay. Well, wait till you can't come to church. Let me hear what you're going to say then. Sister Richardson, stop. Stop, Sister Richardson. Stop. The Bible says that he erects that, and the people go along with it. He also creates his own priests, and he also creates his own idols. And the people start worshiping those idols. This is not even 300 years from the time of Saul to the time of Rehoboam. This is at best 150 to 200 years. At best 150 years to 200 years. The people switch that quickly. And what is the effect when the church apostatizes? I don't know. Maybe when the church starts accepting sin as normal, people actually start believing that men who are not born with the uterus can give birth because they call themselves men. What happens when the church remains silent about abomination and about sin? I don't know. Maybe some scientist or maybe some child psychologist can come up with a great idea that a child should be asked, do you want me to change your diapers? But please understand that the Bible says that because people refuse to listen to the truth, God will send them a spirit of what? Delusion. That they should believe the lie. And is God doing it? Well, let's see, because it's interesting to know that today more children are accepting the homosexual lifestyle as a given. Why? Because according to the statistics, it's been promoted as an acceptable lifestyle by the media. Now, pastor, what, if anything, does this have to do with the famine and the time of Elijah? The famine came upon the people of God in the time of Elijah because they were unfaithful to God. And therefore, and therefore, and therefore, because of that, God acted. I just would like to know, is God changed? Does not the Bible say that God is going to act? And some people, me included, would tell you, I believe COVID is just one of those. Yeah, I know that it's possible that it came out of a lab, but I also know that not a hair nor a feather falls from a bird or somebody's head without God saying so. Isn't it curious? 
Anybody know what month of the year Father's Day is celebrated on? Anybody know what is gay month? How is it possible that they decide that gay month is on the same month of Father's Day, of that Father's Month is? Is it? Do you think? But please observe nowadays in the commercials. I have some. I have. I, I have a video pretty soon. I'm going to show you guys. I, 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 so that way you understand how bad this thing is getting. Okay. Understand that the Bible says that the devil wants to kill the Zerod. Do you know what the Zerod is? The seed. Do you know what the seed is? The man. Because if I kill the man, I kill the society. Are you listening to me? Therefore, Hollywood and the world wants you to believe that God, excuse me, that God does not belong in our sphere, not even in the church, because now they're trying to censor what the church says. But they want you to believe that a woman can be a man. Now, I have a question for you. If a woman could be a man, then why can't a white woman be a black woman? I'm just asking. I'm asking. I'm asking. Because I know in politics we have a white woman who says she's a Native American and she's in the Senate. But that's besides the point. But that's besides the point. But why can't a white person who identifies herself as black be black? Why? Why can't a white kid from the suburbs who has a trust fund not walk around with his, not walk around as a gangbanger? Why? I mean, if we're going to throw away all rationality and all science, let's throw it all away. But pastor, God chooses the kings. God chooses our leaders, not always. Read for me Hosea chapter 4, verse 6. Please read it. Read it, everybody. Read it. I mean, 8 verse 4. 8 verse 4. Read it for me. God says, you chose it, I let you have it. You chose Trump, you got Trump. You chose Biden, you got Biden. You chose Obama, you got Obama. You chose Clinton, you got Clinton. You chose Bush, you got Bush. You chose who you wanted. Don't look at me. This is what you wanted, this is what you got, and this is what we have. Read 1311. Uh, In other words, God says up to this far and no more. God sometimes gives us what we want even though we don't want it. And now what is next on the horizon? Other kin. People who don't identify as male or female. They identify as a different being. Here's some true statistics about how important fatherhood is. What is a man? Is a man brave? Is a man a hero? Is a man, is a man a protector? Is a man vulnerable is a man 
disposable. Is a man broken? Is a man trying? We see the good in men. statistics about the importance of the Z-Rod. Real world statistics about the importance of fatherhood. Are there bad men on this planet? Yeah. I was raised by one. Are there good men on this planet? Yes. They me those mentored me. Today's society wants to destroy manhood. And they are going about it by saying that a man can be a woman and a woman can be a man. And isn't it interesting, isn't it interesting that they are not leaving this to adults, they are doing this to our children as early as kindergarten. Now somebody would tell me, somebody would say, and they have, and they've sent me messages, Pastor, Jesus didn't condemn. Yeah, you're right. John chapter 8. John chapter 8, verse 11. He didn't condemn the woman that was caught in sin. But what did he tell her? Sin no more. Why? Because it doesn't matter what you identify yourself with and what you coerce other people to call you. What matters is what does God call you? And I do know that God is able to redeem anybody. Can you say amen to that? But they will not be redeemed unless they know that what they are doing is a sin. Some individuals ask me, but pastor, the commandments don't say that. Yes, it does. The seventh commandment. Anybody know what the seventh commandment says? Anybody? Thou shalt not commit what? Adultery. Adultery, Adultery is sex out of wedlock. Shacking up is a sin. Do you want to know what happened to me while I was away? I got a phone call from one of the Dominicans. I had a counseling meeting. I had a counseling meeting. You don't want me to be your counselor. You don't. You don't. You want to know why? You want to know why? Because if you're living with somebody and you're not married to them, you know what I'm going to tell you? You guys got to separate. You're living together. You're going to burn together. Do you understand? Do you understand? Now, do you think she was happy when I told her that? No. Do you think she invited me back? No. I have two people, two people, two couples. Pastor, you throw people away. No. I, I, you know, when, I get, when we get comfortable and we get to know one another and blah, 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 and then issues start bringing up, I ask them, how do you want God to bless what he has cursed? You guys want to get married? Separate. Separate, live in separate homes, and then come together and get married. Well, while I was away, one of the two couples called me. Guess what they're doing in October? And guess who's performing the wedding? It's God. If you love me, you will what? You say that you want to be loving. You don't want to share the truth. How can you separate the truth from he who is love? For God is anybody? No. Love. Therefore, anything he says, it's in love because he's not looking at your present. He's looking at your future. The Bible also demonstrates that the people who are faithful to God will also be giving. They will not only share their truth, the Bible truth. And when I'm almost done, I'm almost done. They will also share their wealth. Did you hear me? I'm almost done. They will share their wealth. 
this widow had to make a decision. In her poverty, in her what? Poverty. Is she going to be generous? And what was she? And because she was generous in the proportion with which she gave, what happened? She received. Because by the same measure that you give shall be what? You think that by hoarding, you think that by keeping, you think that by withholding, you're going to have more. I got news for you. The more you give, the more God gives back to you. Can you say amen to that? Now, some of you think that somebody's not worthy of receiving the money. Well, if I knew that the church would spend it wisely, I would give it to them. Well, if I knew that this person would spend it wisely, I would give it to them. When did God ask you? When did God ask you? What in the Bible, where in the Bible does it say, only give when you think that they are worthy of it? Jesus gave his money to the temple, and Ananias and Caiaphas were the high priest. He made Peter go fishing to get a coin to drop it in to the sanctuary at that time. And there was nobody more corrupt than Ananias and Caiaphas. If Jesus could give, why can't you? You look at somebody and determine that they're not worthy of getting money. Who says? Pastor, they're only going to use it for alcohol. How do you know? Do you go shopping with them? Are you going to follow them? God asks you to give, and in the proportion with which you give, what does God say is going to happen? You're going to receive. Now, why is this important? Because of what's coming. What is coming? What is coming is an economic collapse. Now, I'm going to show you that. But if you got to go, God bless you, because I am over my time. We, I, I got up a little late, and, and I got too caught up with the jokes, and I was so happy to see you guys, really. I am. I'm so, I'm sorry. All right? But if you want to see what's coming, okay. Isaiah chapter 58, verse 7 and 8. What does God say that we should be doing? We should give. We should help. We should seek out the other. That's true religion. That's true what? I, Matthew chapter 25, you can look at it for yourself. Why does God say, send, why do some people end up in hell? Because when I was hungry, you did not give me to eat. When I was thirsty, you didn't give me to drink. When I was in prison, you didn't visit me. Notice, God says because of the way you treat other people, this is what's going to happen to you. This woman, this widow, this mother who's a widow and who's poor, she gave. What's coming? So there is evidence to suggest that the World Economic Forum was the actual one who instigated the Bitcoin. 
There's evidence to suggest that this happened around 2018. What year? I'm sorry? 20. What year are we in now? Mm. Because this video is old. It's, it's, it's around 2018. The video isn't recent. And there's evidence to suggest that they used it as a type of test to see how electronic currency would be accepted or not in the world. And now, China is the first nation to declare that Bitcoin may not be used as legal currency in China. What does this mean? That means that the value of Bitcoin has dropped. Because now, a nation said, we will no longer accept it or recognize it. What is so important about understanding about money? Do you have any money in your pocket? Take it out right now. If you have a dollar, if you have a penny, if you have a quarter, take it out right now. Just take it out. I need you to understand something right now. Okay? I don't care if it's Bermudian, I don't care if it's American, Dominican, whatever country it is. Just take it out. Just take it out. Do you want to know why it has value? Do you want to know why it has value? Because the government says so. The moment the government says it has no value, it's paper. Do you understand? Because it doesn't mean it's worth anything. That money is a promise from the government that it is worth what it says it is. Do you understand what money is? Because you, no longer is money bound by gold or by some asset. Money is now given as a promise from a government that it is actually worth something. If you don't think so, you can speak to Aaron, or you could also look at what India did to their currency when they eliminated certain monetary currencies. That's it. They said after a certain date, it would no longer exist. Now, what does the Bible say about our ability to buy and sell? It will be controlled, yes or no? Okay, let's see what China is doing. This is long. Huang Dan just paid with a new type of money at this pharmacy. Oh, uh, uh, That's because China's paper cash is going digital. The digital you want is meant to be faster than using credit or debit cards on digital wallets like Apple Pay. Plus, there are other incentives, like zero transaction fees for merchants, and one day it'll even work offline. But one major difference is that the digital you want is 100% trackable by China's central bank. And when it's launched nationwide, it could impact not only citizens, but also foreign companies operating in the country. The central bank will know who's paying, how much they're paying, when they're paying, where they're paying, and then to analyze the patterns of payment. China's central bank has also said it plans to gradually replace all cash and coins with the digital yuan. The country would be the first major economy to introduce a digital currency in the real world. And while many users say the digital yuan is easy to use, China's money revolution could usher in privacy concerns. Using the phone to pay isn't a new concept for Huang, since he's one of about 770 million mobile payment users in China who rely on digital wallets like Ant Group's Alipay and Tencent's WeChat Pay. These private tech firms hold data on transactions, which the government can access. But because the digital yuan is developed by the central bank, there are no third parties, and that data sits with the government. The Chinese central bank started doling out digital cash through public lotteries in cities across China. Huang is one of the 750,000 people who have won some piece of the $23 million prize in the past year. To start spending his $30 worth of winnings, Huang first downloaded the Digital Yuan app. It recorded that he spent money on lunch and medicine one Saturday afternoon in the southwestern city of Chengdu.
About 10,000 merchants in Chengdu have signed up to accept digital yuan. Zhong Jiayin manages a dumpling restaurant, and she said the digital yuan has some advantages compared with other payment options. For instance, two of China's most popular digital wallets charge merchants an average of 0.6% for every transaction. There's also another upside in the works. The central bank is planning to make transactions possible even without an internet connection. So restaurants like Zhong's won't have to worry about their spotty connections that sometimes make it hard to process digital transactions. This digital yuan is less about money and more about data. Yaya Fenusi is an adjunct senior fellow at the nonprofit think tank Center for a New American Security in Washington, D.C. He's been studying digital currencies for the past six years, and he says China's new currency is not as anonymous as it claims. The central bank has talked about there being controllable anonymity, which really means it's anonymous horizontally, right? The users that are using it don't necessarily know the identity of everyone that they're interacting with. But vertically, it's not anonymous. The central bank is at the top with information on all the users. China's central bank has promised to protect users' privacy. For now, people can choose whether they want to use the digital currency. But the central bank has said that as the country becomes a cashless society, it expects the digital yuan to become the primary way to make transactions. The Chinese government could force <coughs> Chinese companies to only accept payment in digital yuan, which would then force the foreign companies, their foreign counterparts for trade. It could ensure that they have to use that. Central banks have authority to control money supply, but their actions to restrict a digital currency would have a more immediate effect, leaving companies holding that currency all the more vulnerable. For example, Fenusi says China's central bank could put an expiration date on the digital money, similar to how lottery winnings have to be spent before a certain date. It means that the Chinese government could set up a whole lot of things to have your currency maybe valid or invalid based on its own priorities. This is almost like handing over the keys to your business or to your finance department in some ways because you really can't control what at the end of the day may happen with the, the funds that you're holding. While there are privacy concerns, Fenusi says digital currencies can create more efficient monetary policy and counter criminal activities. China's central bank said its digital yuan system would help combat money laundering, gambling, and terrorism financing. Meanwhile, the central bank is also looking into ways to make international transactions possible in digital yuan. And Fenusi says there's a big variable that'll determine if that's going to work. Will foreign governments allow their businesses and citizens to, to hold digital yuan and use it? It's not a given that all other countries are going to transact with this and will because of the privacy, the data issues. So this is really to be determined. While there's no set date for a national rollout, some officials have said the digital currency could be ready for wider use next February during the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing. I think there is an element of, of showing off for the, big, uh, for the big international audience. We have a central bank digital currency that we're using. We're the only country, the biggest country that's doing it. And China isn't alone in this experiment. According to one survey of... So China is not alone. So now let's look at this. The Bible says you will not be able to buy or sell, right? So A, they will devalue the currency. No more currency. No more dollars, no more paper money. It's all gone. It's all digital, number one. Number two, it does, you don't have to be online in order to use it. It'll work when you're offline. How? I don't know how. Number three, they can close, your, mo your money has an expiration date. Did you hear that? That the money has an expiration date. You have to use it before a certain date. So they can put that. And number five, and the last one, number five, they know who you spend it with and where you spend it. Now, you're going to tell me, Pastor, everybody already knows. You're right. You're right. But the banks know. And the government has to get that permission from all of the different banks. It's very cumbersome. But if it's at the central bank, it's only one place. Control and tracking is, is, is easier. 
What does God say is going to happen economically? There's going to be a collapse. What about the United he States? Makes the report. It's interesting timing, Caroline, because the Fed's been looking at this for quite some time, but obviously in the context of the last few days, it does make news. And the idea that they're putting out a paper on this is designed to reassure people, I think, that the Fed is deeply involved in studying the issue of whether you want to call it cryptocurrencies or digital payments. Uh, they're, they're doing that. Uh, what is really unusual is that the Fed's gone to the extent of releasing a video press release starring Jay Powell, the chairman of the Fed, uh, telling people what they're trying to do. Uh, they're trying to create the fastest payment system possible, and they already have that underway in, in many ways with their FedNow system coming online in 2023. And so uh, the Fed is going to be looking at whether they can assimilate into the digital world and yeah. whether they 2023 fed now the united states plans on entering in to the same thing by the year 2023 and there is going to be called fed now what are we looking at we're looking at a time when every single prophecy found in revelation is coming to a head Global finance leaders move closer to what type of tax? International tax. Businesses will have to pay an international tax. And this is what they are, dis they are deciding on right now. What about the local person? No? How behind are you on your bills? Just ask. Them. You don't have to tell me. But in the United States, there are projected by next year, over one million homes will be repossessed. Who's going to take them over? Where are these people going to live? This is what's being argued right now in the United States with their infrastructure bill, about that almost $2 trillion bill. This is what they are deciding. How soon are we to what the Bible said is going to happen? Very soon. What will the final event occur? Simple. God is going to bring down all of that economy all down on its own. But what about the rest of us? How is Elijah fed? Bread and water. How is Elijah taken care of by a widow? Why did all of this happen? Because they were faithful to God. My brothers, my sisters... God is asking us to be faithful to him. God is asking us to be obedient to his word. And God is asking us to share not only the truth, but whatever we have in our possession. I want to encourage you this Sabbath to please be faithful to God. Next Sabbath, next Sabbath will not be like this. I'm sorry. I th I really wanted to share some information with you. Next Sabbath, we're going to look at Obadiah. God says, I need you to serve again. Obadiah, Elijah and Obadiah. God bless you. Why don't we stand for praying? We're going to have a closing word of prayer. We have a closing hymn? Let's pray and a closing hymn. Father God, thank you for your word. Now please, Father, bless us in the rest of the Sabbath. In Jesus' name, amen. The closing hymn. Just want to thank our pastor for that message. And the thing that kept ringing in my, in my head was, was the word, simple word, W-O-W. -W. Wow. What a message. Our closing hymn will be hymn number 289, The Savior is Waiting.
our benediction. Let's pray. Most kind, gracious Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for your word. Lord, we pray that each one of us here and those who are out there in our media platforms will, Lord, will take what we have heard to heart. Lord, we recognize and we see the various prophecies of Daniel and the Revelation fulfilling right before our eyes. So, Lord, we pray that you would strengthen us, that you would provide continually for us, that as we go about sharing your gospel, pray, Lord, that each one will receive it and that they will come to the foot of the cross. Folk will come asking, what must we do to be saved? So, again, Lord, we just thank you for your message today. We pray, Lord, that we will share with those that we come in contact with throughout this day. In Jesus' precious name we pray. May all of God's people together say amen and amen. God bless you. You may be seated until ushered out. Thank you. to do.